Hey guys, it's Pastor Keith, and welcome back to our series on family worship. This series is intended for one of two purposes, either to help you prepare for family worship or to simply play during family worship to allow your family to walk along with the video. I want to begin today by asking three questions that I ended with on last week's video. Let's see how well you remember. Number one, how many books are in the whole Bible? If you said 66, then you're right. How many books are in the Old Testament? If you said 39, you got it right. All right, well, how many books then are in the New Testament? Well, we can do a little math. If there's 66 books in the whole Bible and 39 books in the Old Testament, then that makes 27 books in the New Testament. Hey guys, if you're finding this helpful for family worship and you want me to continue doing these videos, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so this takes us into this week's subject. Last week, we talked about getting to know your Bible. Well, we're going to go further into that subject today by getting to know your Bible through six important persons in the Bible. And those six people are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and Jesus. Now, these are all probably names that you've heard before, but understanding who these people are and how they fit into the narrative of biblical history is a very important part of understanding the whole story of the Bible. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be telling a little bit about each of these persons, but let's very quickly just remind ourselves of who these people are. The first one is Adam. Adam was the first man ever created. We probably heard the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The second one is Noah. Noah was a man who found grace in the eyes of God, and during a time where God poured out his wrath, God gave Noah the ability to build an ark where he could save his family and all of the animals. The next person is Abraham. Abraham was the man that God chose to be a blessing to all the nations and to be the father of the faithful. We can stop right here real quick and recognize that the first three people in this list are all in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And the book of Genesis means beginnings. The book of Genesis ends with God's people being in Egypt. And the next book of the Bible, Exodus, begins showing that they had actually gone into slavery while in Egypt. This is what leads us to the next person, and that is Moses. Moses is the man that God used to lead his people out of slavery. Later in the story of God's people, we see the introduction of a very important king, and his name was David. David was given a promise by God that his throne would last forever. The last and most important person on this list is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he's also the purpose of all of history. The Bible says, for from him and through him and to him are all things. And as we're going to see in the weeks ahead, all of the men in this list point to Christ in one way or another. So I hope you stay tuned as we go through the weeks ahead and we learn about these six important figures. Now, something else I wanted to talk about today on the subject of family worship is the idea of singing together in family worship. Singing together helps encourage our unity and it helps us to understand and remember truth. Singing has a catechistic quality. Catechisms are a way of learning where we memorize questions and answers. Well, as we sing, we're memorizing the words to the song, and it's actually easier for us to remember things when they're put to songs. So as we sing our songs, we are learning and memorizing truth, like a catechism. The song we're going to look at today is a song that was written and produced by a pastor who wanted to show how the whole Bible fits together and points to the person of Jesus Christ. The title of the song is Fullness of Time. The song is based on Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. If you want to do a quick Bible drill, pause the video right now and let everybody see if they can find it. And maybe have a contest for who can find it first. All right, so we're at Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, that says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. 
So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Well, praise the Lord for that wonderful truth. All right, I'm going to teach you the first part of the song, let you understand the words and what it means, and then I'll have you sing along with the original artist. From Adam's rebellion to Moses' good law, death reigned the master of men. With all of creation held under its claw, awaiting redemption from sin. See, this talks about the fact that uh, Adam brought death into the world, and that death has been a plague on all mankind since the beginning. And we've been waiting on redemption. This is talking about before Christ. And then it goes, But when the law thundered in earthquake and fire, Weak as it was through our flesh, it could not help conquer our sinful desires, only tighten the noose round our neck. See, the law can't save us. All it does is show us that we are condemned. And the more that we try to find salvation through the law, the more condemned we realize we truly are. So here's verse 2. Still God remembered His mercy and wrath, and promised a way of escape. A lamb to be killed on the people's behalf would trample the head of the snake. See, that's a promise that's given at the beginning of the book of Genesis, that God would send the seed of the woman to crush the head of the serpent. The next part of the verse goes into the sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament, all of which were pointing to Christ, but by themselves couldn't save. But though we would offer our best to the fire and rivers of blood would be spilt, this could not help with our sinful desires nor atone for the depth of our guilt. Now the song talks about Jesus who came in the fullness of time to bring redemption from sin. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent us his only son Born of a woman, born under law, so that he might a people redeem. So that's the chorus of the song. And the other verses continue to tell the story. So I encourage you now to listen to the entire song and sing along with it as the words will be put up on the screen. And use this as part of family worship. rebellion to Moses' good law, death reigned the master of men. With all of creation held under its claw, awaiting redemption from sin. But when Remembered his mercy and wrath and promised a way of escape. A lamb to be killed on the people's behalf to trample the head of the snake. But though we would offer our best to the fire, I'd raise blood would be spilled. This could not help with our sinful desires, nor atone for the death of our guilt. When the fullness of time had come, God said,
song as a part of family worship. I'm going to try to incorporate some other songs as we move forward in this series, so if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Lastly, before we close, I want to again remind you that we're going to be looking at six important figures over the next few weeks, and I want you to remember next week who those six figures are, so that when I ask you the question, who are the six figures that we're going to be looking at, you'll remember that they are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and Jesus. One last thing, don't forget to pray with one another as part of family worship. Ask each other if there are things that you're concerned about or that you want to pray for. Maybe someone who's sick, maybe something that's going on in your life. Talk to each other during family worship and use those conversations as ways to pray for each other better. Thank you for taking part in this family worship video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you have questions or comments that you'd like me to address in a future family worship video, please leave those in the comments.